Welcome to the Engineerable channel. This is Bamboo, and today I'm going to be taking apart this Nerf Gel Fire Gel Blaster, and we're going to take a look at what's inside and how it's made. Stay tuned to see all those juicy internals. The first thing you're going to need is a number one or number zero Phillips screwdriver that is long enough to fit inside these deep screw holes. The battery is removable, so we're going to go ahead and take that off first, then the hopper, and then the front muzzle flash hider, whatever it is. It's definitely not a silencer, it just makes things louder. All right, let's get down to it and take out all these screws. I got tired of this and used a drill, but you don't want to use a drill to reassemble because you can snap the screws. The screws are different lengths depending on the location, so you need to make sure that whatever location you remove a screw from, you need to put it back in the same spot. The internal of this Nerf blaster is far more sophisticated and complex than any inexpensive blasters I've seen so far. They're not just using the generic STD 1911 style gearbox. They're using a completely custom gearbox that I haven't seen before. A lot of fairly complex internal parts. They have some circuitry in here and they're probably not running the motor power through the switch. They probably have a MOSFET and board that drives the motor and the switch just activates it. The gearbox is also screwed onto the housing using these screws. These screws are 11.6 millimeters long. This one back here is a long one, 19.6 millimeters long. So now I can lift up the gearbox and get the stock out. And the stock is also multiple pieces, but we don't need to take this apart. It's got one separate piece on each side then it's sandwiched by the red pieces and there's two springs on the front. Let's go ahead and remove the trigger part because it keeps wanting to pop out. So the trigger has a spring at the top and there's a lot of clearance between the trigger and the switch. I'm going to pull it pretty far back. What's interesting about the lock is that it's a physical trigger lock and it's two different pieces. They could have put it somewhere else like on the side where it would just needed to be one piece but it snaps back and forth has a detent in the housing here and it pushes this wedge up it's like an inclined plane mechanism and that ledge blocks the trigger there's a little part of the trigger here that uh, prevents it from moving back so this is interesting because the hopper adapter is actually a separate piece because i'm annoyed that this hopper connection was not the standard screw-on connection so you could only use their their hopper that they included However, if you look at this hopper, you can see it has threads. So the Nerf hopper has this feature that's different from other gel blaster hoppers. It allows it to, to twist and lock into the hopper feed neck on the blaster. It also has threads, but these threads are smaller than the standard threads. So the thread is strictly for the Nerf gel fire cap to thread on. So if we make something that works with the normal hoppers, it's still not going to work with the gel fire hopper, but that's okay because I don't really like the shape of this and the flat bottom means there's always gels that aren't coming out and they're bouncing around at the end. So seeing how this hopper adapter is its own separate piece, this is going to be really easy to reverse engineer and 3D print one with threads so we can just thread the bottles into here and use the standard bottles. I'm going to do that mod in another video, so keep an eye out for that. And I'm going to share the file for 3D printing a standard hopper adapter. Okay, I'm going to take this top off here and this is where the location for the switch is. So the switch moves this switch back and forth and there's a little LED that shines up here. They did coat the PCB and electronics to protect them from water and moisture. It's a rubbery type of coating. Here you can see that the gearbox does have a micro switch. So every time the piston comes back, it touches a micro switch such that the blaster knows the position of the piston and it knows if it's made a, a shot in single fire mode. Okay, so I'll go through the internal parts and talk about them. So of course we have the trigger here, the spring on top of the trigger, we have the safety lock for the trigger. This cup here has the contacts for the battery. It has four separate contacts, but there's only two wires coming out, a red and a black. So it probably doubles up the contacts for more current capacity. We've got the micro switch for the trigger. 
pay attention to how all these wires are routed in here. When you go to put it back together, you want to make sure that the wires are all routed the same and you're not going to pinch anything. Okay, so following these wires, we have the motor in the back of the gearbox, and the motor has its own circuit board, and the PCB on the back of the motor has some inductors and such on there. So it's probably trying to prevent uh, back EMF and such from going into the circuit board, into the motor driving circuit. But I'm not an expert on this stuff, so if you know what the circuitry is doing back here, then let me know down in the comments. So the motor is being driven by the circuitry on the PCB. It's not passing through the switch, which is good because it extends the life of the switch. This is the main body of the gearbox. In here you'll have the gears. In here is the piston, and also the cylinder moves back and forth with the plunger on the front. So it's an integrated cylinder and plunger, much like uh, most of the small gel blaster gearboxes are. Surge is the same way. This is the barrel. This is what's called the T-piece. It looks like it's an integrated part. Here's the top of the hopper feed neck, which the hopper attaches into. And then there's the lower part of the hopper feed neck that's like a funnel. And this is the T-piece down here. So when I do a UV tracer mod, I'm gonna put some UV LEDs inside this T-piece right here to light up the glow gel so you can see where you're shooting at night. This front screw here is 11.5, screw right here, also 11.5, screw right here is 11.5. These two screws are smaller in diameter and shorter at 9mm. I just want to record that because these screws are all different sizes. I see a wire sticking out here, I'm not sure what that purpose of that wire is. Okay, so the gearbox does have some snaps right here, right here. So push those snaps in and lift that gearbox out. The cylinder is spring-loaded, so be careful when you take this apart, stuff can go flying. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. The gears in here look pretty heavy duty. They look well made. And of course, to keep things interesting, they did not use the same size gears as the Surge Gel Blaster uses, or most of the other small pistol gel blasters use. They use gears that are bigger. Like if I remove the sector gear and compare it to the sector gear on the Nerf, you'll see that the Gel Blaster sector gear is smaller. The number of teeth still looks to be about the same, but the gears are just smaller on the Gel Blaster. This is the next gear, and you can see the difference, how much larger the Nerf gear is than the Gel Blaster gear. So Nerf went with larger gears. You can see the teeth, the teeth are bigger of the gears. So the Nerf Gel Blaster gears should be more durable than the Surge gears. Let's take a look at the next gear. This next gear on the Nerf is also much larger. It's the one on the right. The profile of the teeth is much larger, so it's going to be much more difficult to strip the Nerf gears. And the bevel gear, you can see how much larger the bevel gear is also on the Nerf. However, the pinion gear on the motor doesn't look much larger than the pinion gear on the Surge gel blaster, so the pinion gear is often the one that ends up stripping there. So my conclusion here is that Nerf is using some non-standard proprietary gears such that we won't be able to find replacement gears for the Nerf Gel Blaster if the gears happen to strip. But hopefully they're using larger gears with bigger teeth and so they should be more durable and last longer. If we take the barrel off we see that it's very similar to the others except that this is all one single piece. The T-piece is integrated into the barrel versus with the Gel Blaster for example the barrel is often a separate piece from the T-piece carefully remove the springs so it doesn't shoot out. And one thing I wanted to check is can we install a stronger spring in here? For example, this is a Gen 2 Gel Blaster Surge and it shoots at about 175 FPS, which is a better speed for this size pistol blaster. And basically you're limited by the motor strength and the gear strength because at some point if it's too strong in here it's just going to strip these things out. 
once you get to 200 FPS or so, you really need to go to larger airsoft standard style gears like the rifles. So the question is, can we use this larger, stronger spring that came out of the gel blaster surge in this Nerf blaster? I'm gonna take every gear out of here just so we can see the process of putting this back together. Here we can take a look at the circuit on the back of the motor. Don't lose this spring on the ratchet pawl. This is called the anti-reverse latch in airsoft terminology. This prevents a spring from back driving the whole gearbox. And here's the last gear. Okay, so in order to reassemble all this, you first have to put the bevel gear into place. Then this ratchet pawl goes in place. Then make sure that the wire from the spring it goes over the top like this. So put that ratchet pawl back in place so it engages with the gear. Then you have to bring this wire back over the top of this plastic here. And that's what we saw sticking out of the gearbox earlier. Now you can put the motor back down in the housing. Make sure the wires are passing through this kind of tunnel back here. Okay, so we're going to take the smaller of the two spur gears and place it here. The next gear to go in place is the sector gear. The sector gear is the one that has missing teeth. So you're going to take it, place it down like this. I'm going to position it such that the missing teeth are up so the piston is not engaging with it currently. And then you're going to take the larger of the two spur gears and place it on top here. So now the whole drivetrain is complete. This is the piston and cylinder assembly. It's two parts that actually move together at some point. While I'm in here and putting this back together, I'm gonna to put a tiny bit of lube on the inside of this cylinder wall. I use a super lube synthetic grease for greasing up the gearboxes. Okay, when you put the cylinder Back inside, you need to make sure that it's hooked onto the spring, like that. And then slide this back in here. Put the barrel back on, helps hold things down a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit more grease on these gears. They already had some on there, but when I was touching it, some came off, so better to add some more. Yes, you can put too much grease in the gearbox, but it'll just kind of spin itself out. Adding some grease to the walls that the cylinder and the piston slide in is also good. Now I'm going to put the longer spring in that comes from the Gel Blaster Surge Gen 2. I think the Gen 3 probably has the same spring. Put that, oh, boom. Okay, it can be easier to put the cylinder in first before putting the gears. And now use the barrel to try to hold everything down while you put the other side of the gearbox housing on. One last thing to check to make sure is, is the spring on the anti-reverse latch properly positioned. Like that. Make sure the wires are routed through the slot here and then put the top of the gearbox on. Fortunately, the gearbox snaps together. So once it snaps on, you don't have to worry about it popping open. Let's put those screws back in the gearbox. The smaller screws go back in the motor area. I forgot to route these wires through this tunnel back here. Don't forget to always back up the screws a little bit first to make sure you're threading into the same threads 
the screws should go in pretty easily, otherwise you're probably cross-threading. The barrel tip does go on only one way. There's a little notch here. So that notch fits down into the slot on the back. Okay, before we go too far and reassemble everything, let's test to see if the gearbox still works after those changes that we made. I'm gonna slide the battery in here and just pull on the trigger. Oops, I guess I need to switch it on. Pull on the trigger. Okay, it's a good thing I did the test because what I realized is when my cylinder popped out, I think it came off the spring and I forgot to hook it back up. So now everything's just moving back and forth together and it's not working, air is not coming out the end. So if it's not working when you're doing your tests, it's probably because this cylinder tap at spring is not hooked up to the cylinder, which is what happened just now. So you need to get that spring hooked up, make sure it's on there, and then put the cylinder down in place and get this spring compressed. And then use the barrel to hold everything down. The gears back in and put the gearbox back on. Okay, test it again to make sure it's fixed. That sounds better now. And I feel air pressure here, so now it's working properly. Make sure all the wires are kind of back into their place. So I'll be tucked down here in this cable trough. Take the stock, lift up the gearbox slightly, slide it on behind the gearbox, over top of the gearbox. This PCB has to fit inside of this little notch here. Probably the easiest thing to do here is take this top cover, take the PCB. There's slots on either side here. Slide the PCB into those slots. Make sure that the switch is properly captured by the outside switch part. Okay, take that, lift up the gearbox, and then put this over everything. It is not a very easy thing to get reassembled. The feeder funnel, it needs to fit over top of the T-piece, slide down, and then these tabs fit into spaces on the side of the housing. Go ahead and put the hopper adapter back in and make sure that the connection points are on either side of the blaster. Put that back in place. Okay, so now the trigger assembly. Put the safety back on. Put the trigger back in like this. Check to see that that works. Before we put the top housing back on, we can't forget to put these screws back in. So there's three screws that we need to put back in that hold the gearbox down. These screws are 11.6 millimeters long. This one back here is a long one, 19.6 millimeters long. Okay, once everything is back in place, then we can put the top cover back on. So this one is a short screw here in the front, 11.6. Both of these screws in the top are also short screws, 11.5. This screw here in the top rear is a long screw, 19.5 millimeters. The screw in the middle here is a short 11.5 millimeter screw. The screw in the front is a long 19.5 millimeter screw. This screw here in the front is a long 19.5 millimeter screw. The screw in the top of the grip is a short 11.5 millimeter screw. This screw here is a short 11.5 millimeter screw. All three of these screws are the short 11.5 millimeter screws. All five of these screws, this, 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 and this, are all the short 11.5 millimeter screws. And that's it for taking apart and reassembling the Nerf Gel Fire Blaster. Hopefully yours still works after doing all this. This is not an easy blaster to take apart and put back together. Specifically, it's not easy to put back together because there's so many intricate things going on. If you have any issues, make sure you just 
watch the video carefully. I got everything to work. Everything works fine. Putting it back together.